Aside from providing an unparalleled military tool with the potential to project tactical air force across great distances, an aircraft carrier is regarded as the most important sea-based asset. It also launches air force from the water. It serves as the focal point of modern combat fleets. But what happens when a sailor falls off an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean? Hold on tight as we dive deep beneath the surface to learn more about aircraft carriers and other topics. How many crew members are required to run the activities on an aircraft carrier, in your opinion? In light of the large number of crew members, the answer is above 6,000, which is a very large amount. Isn't perfect execution of the operations what is expected? We cannot, however, rule out the chance that someone could trip and fall into the water. So what precisely occurs in the event that a U.S. Navy sailor is to fall off an aircraft carrier? What occurs when a person trips and disappears in the ocean? Since we are well aware, the safety protocols on an aircraft carrier are always guaranteed. And to be quite honest, it's almost unheard of for the crew to fall off the aircraft carrier. However, incidents where a plane's crew member fell into the water have happened. A modern aircraft carrier can be up to 10 meters tall. Think about how it would feel to plunge from such a vast height. The water's surface would resemble certain males. The force of gravity operating on the water is the same as that acting on the ground for this reason. And if a victim falls in the wrong spot, they risk dying before help arrives. The aircraft carrier has safety features built into its construction, unlike other vessels. 50,000 tons or more of steel plates are used in each American aircraft carrier. The fighter wouldn't be able to take off or land if all the standard guardrails were mounted on the aircraft stack. Thus, it includes retractable guardrails that are reasonably simple to use. Additionally, it features a safety net that acts as a barrier to keep crew members from falling into the sea. The deck of the aircraft carrier is constructed in a fashion that allows for both a sizable takeoff runway and a runway for fighter aircraft, providing its primary function of transporting those aircraft. But in order to prevent accidental falls into the ocean, the crew members undergo extensive training. What procedures are used when a crew member falls off an aircraft carrier? He will notify the navigation bridge of the man overboard if someone jumps overboard and someone else spots it. To give the ship a clear view when it is being turned in that direction is one thing that is very vital and should be remembered. A life ring is promptly tossed over the same side, even if the person who has fallen into the water is not visible and this denotes the approximate location that the user crossed for navigational purposes. The officer in charge of the engines or the con. He is in charge of ordering a Williamson turn and an alert to be broadcast throughout the ship. So that's where the person dropped off to now. If you are unfamiliar with the Williamson churn, it is a sudden forceful churn that causes the ship to turn around 60 degrees from its initial path. After doing so, it sharply turns around and heads back in the opposite direction until the ship is 20 degrees from its original heading. This is the point at which a shipboard recovery is feasible and will be tried. An attempt to rescue the shipboard is made by a Coast Guard cutter in the movie The Guardian. The main piece of equipment is the SAR or Search and Rescue Jabbar David, which is essentially a straightforward steel tube bent into an upside-down J and can be swum over the side. A competent swimmer may be lowered into the water using a rescue strap on the device, and the victim can then be pulled out by the swimmer. As soon as the rudder is in the center, the ship moves back to the water's edge where the person was standing. The hand churn causes the propellers to move from their original position and move away from the human. If they encounter them in a designated location, there is a low probability that they will survive. A few sailors are instructed to lower one or more boats to form a rescue party when they hear the man overboard alarm, but they are not a part of or connected to the rescue operations, these sailors. However, they gather at their muster stations so that they can be counted. The muster counts are then reported to the bridge, which is in charge of providing some indication of who is missing from the ship's company and is most likely in the water. At this point, the ship starts its search and rescue operation to not only save the person overboard, but also to recover them. Tim Dees, a retired police officer, described an incident from his real-life experience that took place one night when a deck was ejected from an S3. He claimed that the naval flight officers ended up hanging in a chute from Sumba's antennae for a while, which also served as the inspiration for his new call sign, Swinger. The pilot eventually found himself behind the ship after that. It took 20 minutes to locate and collect him in the darkness, despite the fact that the helicopter was only a mile away. This was difficult labor. Although Tim Dees provided a lot of useful information, it is true that different types of ships will operate differently when it comes to the man overboard 
However, the carrier can reverse. The subject usually has an aircraft to help with the search more effectively. And we're confident that a sailor lost at sea would prefer to see an S-853 hovering above and lowering a SAR swimmer to the ground than to see a hundred kilotons of steel coming down on him. The idea of man overboard, which we explored in the first half of the film, can use a little perspective. Many former Navy members claim to have kept the aft lookout watch while the ship was in motion. Dan Tanhill, a former third-class machinery repairman in the United Nations Navy. I was on a 4,100-ton ship, USS Samuel B. Roberts, no higher honor. This is about 1 the size of a carrier. While on aft lookout, I had the constant churning of the prop wash and the exhaust of two Detroit diesel V16s and one LM2500 gas turbine drowning out all other sounds. At night, the sea itself was the darkest black said, I was on a 4,100-ton ship. The U.S. Samuel B. Roberts, no higher honor. This is about 1 by 20th the size of a carrier while on aft lookout. I had the constant churning of the prop wash and the exhaust of two Detroit diesel V16s and one LM2500 gas turbine, drowning out all other sounds at night. The sea itself was the darkest black imaginable, except for when the stern light illuminated the prop wash. If someone had fallen overboard at night, there's no way I could have heard the splash, which was the only indication. I could have possibly seen when the prop wash turned blood red. The single churn, also known as the Anderson churn, is another tactic that is usually used as soon as it is discovered that someone has fallen into the water. In order to rescue the casualties as quickly as possible while the point is still in view, this turn is often executed. In addition, as both options will require more time to travel back to the starting point, the Williamson turn that was explained earlier in the movie might be a better choice. The best course of action when handling a person who has fallen overboard is to constantly steer the boat upward. In addition to keeping in mind that the engine of the vessel should be shut off when the person is being propelled forward by the propellers, this is the greatest strategy to minimize injury. The rapid turn, also known as the quick turn, is the optimum course of action for sailing ships in the event of a manned overboard scenario. When there is a small crew on board or when the ship is in choppy waters, it is still possible to view this approach as the most trustworthy and promising one. Additionally, the crew on methods, the aircraft carrier has jobs. been through extensive training, making it extremely unlikely that anyone... Please share your thoughts on this in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. While you're there, please turn on the notification bell to ensure you receive all our upcoming uploads. I hope you had a great time watching the video. We'll meet at the next one.